So I will talk about joint work with uh, Matija Bukic and uh, Daniel Korandi. And let me start with the following setting. You have R H colored, colored graph G, right? and you want minimal number of monochromatic trees, trees covering vertices of G. Okay, so this is my settings. I give you a graph. And obviously, uh, so I want a worst case scenario, right? So let me denote by TCRG, right? Maximum over colorings. So you, you take the worst coloring and then minimal number of trees uh, needed to cover, right? And trees would be always monochromatic. So I want to study this parameter, right? So I want to know how bad this can be. Actually, this is a very ancient question, so it goes back to 60s. Uh, the first question of this type was asked by Garfash at uh, Ger Gercher. Daniel, how you pronounce? Gercher. Yeah. OK, and, uh, and it was extensively studied since then. I will not make justice to mention all the results. There are literally many, many papers on this topic. So let me give you like a simple example, first so that we understand what I'm talking about. So if my G is a complete graph on n vertices, then I claim that it's very easy to see that TCRKN is always at most R. And again, remember, I'm coloring the edges, but I don't assume that it's proper coloring in any way. Just every edge gets in color. So if you have a complete graph, you look on one vertex, and you look on edges touching this vertex. And every color gives you a star at that vertex. And obviously, these stars color, cover all the vertices. And the number of stars as a number of colors is at most star. Okay? Right? So for complete graph, just looking on one vertex, you can cover the complete graph by monochromatic stars and the right most R stars. But actually deciding whether this is an answer already a non-trivial question, because there is a very famous conjecture by Lovath and uh, Reiser. It's actually a special case of more general conjecture of Reiser, which says that in this case, TCR, Kn is R minus 1. That R minus 1 uh, trees would be enough, right? This is a, people who know, it's a very famous conjecture of Reiser. Now, what I want to show you is that this is a quite non-trivial parameter. Even if your graph is dense, pretty close to the complete graph, this thing doesn't need to be finite. When I say doesn't need to be finite, obviously, since your object is finite, it's always a finite number. When I say not finite, I mean not a function of the number of colors. It will depend on the size of the graph. So here is an example. And this would be a very instructive example. So what you do, you do the following. You take a, a this is an independent set, say of size t. And t can be some large number, let's say log n. It can tend to infinity together with the size of the graph. Then you take a clique of size n minus t. Uh, so clique of size n minus t, clique. And then you, what you do, you put the edges between the click and the independent set in such a way that for every vertex v in the click, so let's call this set b, so for every v in b, the degree of v inside a, let's say, is precisely r minus 1. Right? So this is very dense graph. And actually, even all the degrees would be pretty big because there are n vertices. This set is small, so I can make the degrees this direction to be roughly n over t. And yet I claim that TCR of this graph uh, is at least t. Okay. So let me tell you why this is the case. So I'll, I'll need to tell you the bad coloring of this graph, and then you'll see the idea. So what would be the coloring? So here is a coloring. Col uh, color edges 
inside B by color R. So these guys will get one color inside B. Obviously, I can cover them by one tree. That would not cost me much. But color edges touching V in B, uh, or color edges from from V in B to A, rainbow using colors 1, 2, up to R minus 1. Right? So note this direction from every vertex there are precisely R minus 1 colors. R minus 1 colors are left. So for every star like that, I color it rainbow. Now what is a claim? So I will not write it, I'll just say it. So take arbitrary vertex here. So this vertex cannot be contained in any monochromatic component of size bigger than 1. It actually would be component of its own. Uh, because if you take vertex here, and suppose it's in the red component, it means that you need to take a red edge to leave it that direction. So you go that direction by red, but that, that vertex V, there are no other red edges. So you cannot continue. So basically, every such vertex together with some vertex from B would be a monochromatic component. So you need at least two components. Right? Is it clear? So this would be a very instructive example for the next question which I want to ask. It's actually not my question. It's a question of uh, Ball and de Basio. So there is a very uh, kind of natural trend in recent years in extremal combinatorics that things which you prove for complete graph, you later consider in a random graph setting and ask what's happening there, whether the situation Typically, many results, dense random graph resembles complete graph, so you try to prove things there. So the question of uh, Ball and de Basio, actually let me use all space I have. Question Ball and de Basio. Basio is uh, what is TCR of GNP? So you take GMP, it's a Michael mentioned in his talk, you take a random graph, every edge with probability P, and you ask what the, so you color its edges using R colors, and you ask how many monochromatic trees you need to color this object. So, so let me mention the observation, and then I'll, I'll tell you the conjecture. So the observation was that if N P to the R smaller, smaller than log n, then TCR of GNP, uh, let's say GNP, was infinity. Right? So what they observe is that if your graph is sparse, then you need the number of trees which tends to infinity together. But then it's not a function of r. Now it's really important this thing. So, so let me tell you how to think about this threshold. This is precisely a threshold when any r vertices have a common neighbor. So if you think, if you take R vertices and you ask what's the probability the vertex is connected to them, it's P to the R. There are N vertices, so expected number of common neighbors, and N to the P to the R. If this number is much smaller than 1, I don't expect R vertices to have a common neighbor. And then they tell me, OK, then the number of monochromatic trees you need will tend to infinity. And the reason is precisely this reason. right? You will have, in your random graph, an independent set of arbitrarily large size as a function of n log n or even bigger, such that vertex outside of the set has at most r minus 1 neighbors in the set, and then this proof gives you that distance to infinity. So that was their observation. And so the question conjecture was, suppose we're in a different regime. So where n, p, r, bigger, bigger log n, right? So which means, again, how to think. Every R vertices have common neighbor. Or actually many even common neighbors. And then they ask two things. So first, is TCR 
GNP less or equals uh, some uh, function of r, f of r, right, Co constant, finite. Let's say this is finite for me. But moreover, they ask, is TCR GNP less or equal than R, right? So basically, the idea was that having many common neighbors for any R tuple, it's exactly the property which makes in the complete graph this number being R. So they said the minute we have for every R vertices many common neighbors, we behave like a complete graph, right? This TCR is small. So that was their question. Now, so this was proved for R equals 2 by uh, Kohayakawa, Mota, and Schacht, who basically confirmed that they also do believe that that would be the situation. That the minute you start having for any R tuple or many common neighbors, these things should be finite, and moreover, this thing should be very small. It should be linear and none and even R. Okay. So, so what I want to present you in this talk is very surprising answer to this question, and actually an approach to understand this parameter, right? Exactly through the number of common neighbors of the tuple, which which gives answers which are completely orthogonal to what people expected for this problem. And before I do this, let me mention another thing, which presumably very non-related to what I talk about, right? So I talk about random graph and covering this random graph when they edge colored by monochromatic tree. Now I want to look on the following thing. I call it Heli type results <laughs> for hypergraphs. And I'm looking on the following setting. So here is my setting. So I will look on R uniform R partite hypergraph. So the R uniform means every H has R vertices. R partite means the vertex that splits into R parts, and every H hits every part in exactly one vertex, right? So, uh, so let me give you a definition. So H uh, R uniform R partite uh, hypergraph has a transversal so cover W if W is of size precisely R, W has one vertex in every part, and every edge E in intersects W. Right? So it's a cover. And transversals means it's a set of size r, one vertex from every part, and it hits all the edges of r. Okay? And so I now give you a parameter. So define h uh, p r k. It's a maximal cover number of n R partite, R uniform hypergraph H, such that any k edges of H have a transversal cover. Let me spend a few minutes explaining things. So first of all, why I call it Haley type result? So there is a very famous theorem of Haley going to the beginning of 20th century, which says that if you have a collection of convex sets in RD, such that any d plus 1 of them intersect, then all of them intersect. So basically, in, in this spirit, so if you have a hypergraph of certain kind, such that every d plus 1 sets you can hit by one vertex, then the cover number of this whole structure is 1. Right? So you can ask similar results for hypergraphs and kind of a more gener and generalization of Haley type result. You have a hypergraph 
where every k edges have certain cover number, and then you're trying to infer from this a covering number of the whole big system. Actually, this question, this Halley type question, was posed about uh, 30 years ago in the early 90s by Erdes, Heinel, and Tuza. And uh, there are results in this direction by Sasha Kostachka, Dima von der Flas, and uh, Woodall. And what we need, we need a R-partite version of this question, right? So look what, what I'm saying. I'm saying you have a hypergraph, which is R-uniform, R-partite, and I'm telling you that any small number, K would be some parameter, right? Any small number of edges can be hit by transversal. So it's a covering set of size R, but which is, has one vertex in every part. And I'm asking how big can be a cover number of this hypergraph, right? So I want a bound. So it's already non-trivial that, you know, you can put some bound here, right? Maybe it can be infinite, and in certain cases it can be. But I want this as a function of K and R, okay? So that would be a, a parameter which we want to study. But first let me give you a good reason why we want to study this parameter. And the reason why we want to study this parameter, so the main theorem which we have, which connects these two seemingly not connected things, so it's with uh, Matya, Daniel, and myself, which says that uh, take your edge probability P to be roughly between log n divided by n to the power 1 over k and uh, uh, log n divided by n to the power 1 over k plus 1, right? So observe that uh, this thing, right, NPR being log n, it precisely means that your p is roughly log n divided by n to the power 1 over r. So you start with, be, below this probability there is nothing. You need infinitely many trees. You need the number of trees which grows with the size of the graph. So you start from here, and then you start increasing your r. So this is why I put here k, right? You start increasing your k, you're getting denser and denser graphs. The question, what is the uh, number of monochromatic trees which you need? And so our main result is then the number of monochromatic trees you need to cover any RH colored GMP is very close. I mean, I have a precise bound, but I don't want to write it. You can look in the paper. But it's basically essentially this parameter. So once you understand this parameter, you understand how many trees you need. Okay? It's maximum, right? Maximal cover. So it's a worst case scenario. So you give me a R uniform hypergraph where every K edges can be hit by a transversal, and you ask how big can be a cover number of such hypergraphs. What is the worst case scenario? Of all, all hypergraphs, right? And you compute this function. So first of all, I claim that this function, there is some answer which depends on K and R. And then I say that claim that this answer, if you take a random graph of Z density, this answer tells you how many trees you need. Okay. So let me give you so, uh, some surp surprising kind of uh, uh, results about random graph from this connection. So, so we, we did two things in the paper. So first of all, we understood this parameter. We actually understood, maybe it would be interesting to Sasha, also the answer to the original question of Erdős in, in a big range of the parameters, right? So again, the original question of Erdős, you have a not necessarily apartheid hy hypergraph. You say, uh, have an R-uniform hypergraph. You tell me any K edges can be hit by some number of vertices, not necessarily R. You ask what's the cover number of the big structures. There is some answer there which we know now very pretty accurately. And in particular, it also works in our part setting. So let me tell you uh, what we know. Okay. So you remember, this was the question, and the kind of conjecture was that maybe, right? So let's write what they, what they believed. They said, maybe TCR of G and P already less or equal than R when P is roughly bigger, bigger than log N over N to the power 1 over R. 
So actually, this is very much not true. So, so there are two things which will follow from this result. So first of all, indeed, when p bigger bigger than log n over n to the r, 1 over r, tcr of g and p is finite. That's, they were correct. After that, it's always function of r. But it's actually quadratic in r, and by no means linear. So it's quadratic both upper and lower bound. And then apparently it takes a really, really long time until it becomes r. So another thing which you can show that in order tcr of g and p to be less or equal than r, your p should be of order, let me write, again, I, we have some error terms, as I thought I would be imprecise here, log n over n, but divided into the power 1 over 2 to the r. So you really wait exponential time. So basically, instead of every r vertices having a common neighbor, I need every 2 to the r vertices to have a common neighbor in a random graph. And only then, if I have an r h coloring of this random graph, then uh, this would be, I can find an r uh, monochromatic trees covering all the vertices, right? And this parameter very slowly, right, because of this relation, goes from being quadratic to being linear. Basically, uh, you know, if you put here 2 to the r to the alpha, right, so if you put here, right, if your p is roughly log n over n to the power 1 over 2 to the uh, alpha, right, where alpha is some power of r, r to the alpha. Let's put it like that. It would be more convenient, r to the alpha. So if alpha is 1, that would be this. If alpha would be, uh, say, uh, almost 0, that would be this scenario. So in this case, uh, we would know that TCR of G and P uh, is roughly R to the 2 minus alpha, right? Because that's kind of how, how it goes to from quadratic to linear, right? So if alpha is close to 0, it's quadratic. If alpha close to 1, then it's linear, and all the way in between. Now let me mention one additional interesting thing which we deduce from, with, from this relation. So actually, it's very important to mention here. Uh, I hopefully will have some time to show you some simple. So I want to show something in, from the proof, and there would be some simple reduction, one direction, which allows me to do this. So this relation depends only on the fact that uh, in this range, which I wrote here, it's exactly, you see the range because the way I choose a probability, so the gene P satisfies the property that every k vertices have a common neighbor. And actually, this more or less the important, indeed, this example which I gave you in the beginning is very instructive. This is really an important property when you're trying to cover the edge colored graph uh, using monochromatic trees. So therefore, there is another corollary from our result, which answers some other question of Ball and de Basio. So, so far I discussed the setting where I have each colored graph, and I want to cover its vertices by monochromatic trees. But Ball and de Bassi also ask, suppose you not allow me to use the same color twice, right? So you, you use your red tree, so red is gone, you now need to use a different color. So then obviously if you have only R colors, then you only reduce to the case where R monochromatic trees are enough. But even in that case, even if you have a statement where R monochromatic trees are enough, it's not necessarily means that you can not to reuse the color. Right? So they had a very precise conjecture, which says that if you have sufficiently dense graph, uh, then you have this scenario. Right? So then you seem, so observe that actually complete graph is like that. Right? So in the case of the complete graph, I can cover its vertices 
by our monochromatic trees and they're all different color because we took a vertex and we took a red star and then blue star and so on. And there was in a general statement saying that every dense graph sufficiently dense close to the complete graph has this property. And so here was the conjecture. So this is Val and uh, De Passio. So G and vertex graph, graph, are each colored. So minimal degree of G is at least 1 minus 1 over 2 to the R times N. So you, you're very close to the complete graph in terms of your minimal degree is very high, but it's still some constant smaller than 1 times N. Then they said then G can be covered by monochromatic trees of distinct colors. Right? So obviously, this immediately implies that the number of, of trees is at most r, but I actually want uh, distinct colors. So they also observe that this is tight, if true. And they have quite complicated example showing that this tight, if it's true. So the case uh, r equals 3 was proved by uh, Girao, Letzter, and Sacharsbuthe. And what I want to say is that from the reduction which, which I show you, uh, very easily will follow the truth of this conjecture. So, so there are two actually interesting things. So first, the truth of the conjecture follows. And the second, because of this connection, you also understand the example better. So actually, this complicated example can be deduced doing a reverse engineering by looking on the, right, on the hypergraph cases, you know, apartheid hypergraphs with a transversal cover. So you, you get some bounds there on the covering number. You have the example which shows that the bound is tight. You reverse engineer from this, our reduction back to the graph and to the trees, and you see why the examples works and from where it comes. Okay, so the theorem. Theorem, uh, so uh, conjecture is true. And let me explain why the conjecture is true. Actually, what we're using in our reductions, observe, Any 2 to the r vertices in G have common neighbor. So actually, again, this reduction, which I will show you in a minute, explains what's actually going on. So the only thing which was important for this graph to have this conclusion is that the degrees are so high that if you do greedy procedure, you take a first vertex, you look on its neighborhood, you lose factor 1 over 2 to the r. Then you take a next vertex, the, the co-degree is now, you lose factor 1 to over 2 to the r twice, and so on. So it means that if you take any 2 to the r vertices by pigeonhole principle, because your degree is so big, you will have a common neighbor. And that's the only thing which you need to deduce that G can be covered by monochromatic trees of distinct color. Okay. So now let me show you a, a reduction. I think I actually have a... Uh, good time. Any questions? Right. So basically, I want to show you one direction to kind of justify all this, uh, all these connections. If it, there would be time, I maybe show you some more. Okay. Uh, so what is the reduction which I want to show? Right. So here is my setting. G is RH colored graph. Uh, and I want every K vertices have a common neighbor. Because I told you, this is the only thing actually, even in the case of the random graph, when you look on edge probabilities and you look 
why I choose edge probabilities in certain interval, I, I need this thing. Right? And then I want to show you that TCR uh, G is at most H uh, P of R K. Right? So you remember? So this was the bound which says that if you have an R partite, R uniform hypergraph, in which every K vertices can be, K, every K edges can be hit by transversal cover, then it has total cover number at most this. Right, call it, call this thing for the purpose of the proof T, right? So there is this T which depends only on R and K, such that any hypergraph which is R uniform, R partite, in which any K edges can be hit by transversal, the total cover number is at most T, and I claim the same T will work if you want to cover G uh, uh, using um, uh, any edge coloring of G. Okay, so. Uh, so here is a uh, here is a proof. So, so you give me your RH color graph. I need to build you. I do a reduction, right? I need to build you an R partite hypergraph. So here is a way you do R partite hypergraph. So so here are your parts. So the number of parts would be R. So what is the first part? So in the first part, right? So you take all maximal monochromatic components of color one. Right? So again, you look only on color one. It's some subgraph of your graph. Obviously, it has monochromatic components. You take maximal, right? So you look on its connected component in color one. And they partition. If it's very important to observe that they partition a vertex set, right? Every vertex lives in one of the components. Maybe it's a component on, it, on its own, right? But the first part, I look on the color one. I look on the connected component on the color one. I write you the components as a vertices. They are vertices in this thing. And similarly, right? So this is color R. So uh, maximal monochromatic. Components of color K, right? And similarly for ice part, right? So this is ice part. This is one. This is uh, R of color R. Sorry, this is R part. So so this is components of color R. Okay. So this is my setting. Now I need to tell you what the edges. So the edges are the following. For every vertex V in G, right, E of V, it would be component of color one containing V, component of color two containing V, V and so on, component of color R containing V, right? So is it clear? Right? So it's very natural. For every vertex, it leaves in red component, blue component, green component, and so on, for every color. Right? So you will get some edge here. This edge is EV. It basically records in which components you leave. Okay? And that's my reduction. So giving any edge coloring of the complete graph, I'll get, uh, so of my graph G, I'll write this components, connected components in every color. And then my edge for corresponds to vertex of G. And it just records me, gives me, and obviously this graph is R uniform, R partite, because every edge contains precisely one guy from every part, because it lives in precisely one component for every color. And now there are two things to observe, right, to, to finish a reduction. The first thing is that since every k vertices in G, ah, let's call this hypergraph, call this hypergraph, call this hypergraph H. Okay. 
Yo, Maldi, I but if it's really doesn't matter, right? I can delete it because I'm looking on the cover number. It's really not important. Since every k vertices in G have common neighbor, right? Then every k edges in H have transversal. So this is a connection number one. So let me say it. You can persuade yourself uh, 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 as follows. So if, let's say, u1, uk all connected to w, so these are your vertices, then I claim this, this would imply that e u1 and so on, e uk, intersect e w is non-empty. Right? So it's very clear. I even tell you who is your transversal cover. Right? So you give me any k edges. This k edges corresponds to k vertices. These k vertices have a common neighbor w. Then I claim that h e w, which is obviously a transversal because it lives across, intersect all of them. Why? So think about the situation. So here are these guys. So this is u1 up to uk. They all have common neighbor w. So if you take, for example, u1 and w, this is an edge. This edge has a color red. So if this edge has a color red, it means u1 and w both live in the same red component. So red components was a vertex here. Therefore, u1, eu1, and uw have the same element here which they share. So they intersect and, and so on. So this is the first thing. And the second thing is, OK, so now my hypergraph h has this property. Every k edges can be hit by transversal, right? So since every k edges of H have transversal <laughs> cover, then H uh, uh, has cover number at most, HPR, uh, K, which is T, right? So which, what it means? It means there exist T vertices of H, which are exactly T monochromatic T component. Because if you think what was vertex here, vertex was a monochromatic component in Z. There are T vertices of uh, H intersecting all edges. Right? And if when you think that what does it mean that this uh, component intersecting all edges, you see that these T monochromatic components, they cover G. Okay? Well, why again? It's very simple once you decide on this reduction. Why is this T monochromatic components cover G? So you take a vertex, right, for every V, right? Take EV. So you remember, EV was an edge corresponding to the components here. And then it means that if you take this EV, because this T vertices was a cover set, so EV contains one of these guys which means V lives in one of these components. That's all. Right? So this is a reduction. Okay? So that tells you that, in particular, you want to understand this parameter. And if you can understand it well, then you can understand uh, your problem about how many monochromatic trees you need to uh, cover the vertices of some edge-colored graphs. And this works for random graphs. It works in some other scenarios. So let me just finish because I want, for example, to show you some complete proof of something. So you remember this question of uh, Girard, uh, of, of the Basio and uh, Ball about the graphs with large degree. So I wanted, I showed you that these two things are connected, right? That if you want to know how many monochromatic trees you need to have, then you look on this HRPK. And you remember that for this scenario, right? So you remember that if delta of G was bigger 1 minus 1 over 2 to the r n, then it, it implies that every 2 to the r vertices 
have common neighbor. Right? And so my k is 2 to the r. And so I want to know what is hpr 2 to the r. And it appears that this is r. Okay. So I claim that if you have a r partite r uniform hypergraph, where every 2 to the r edges can be hit by transversal, then all edges can be hit by transversal. And this is again a very classical, so this is nice, it connects to very classical things. So this is a very classical result going back to uh, 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 cover critical hypergraph. So the cover critical hypergraph result says that uh, if 2 r choose r edges of the r uniform hypergraph can be covered by some set of size r, they all can be uh, covered by the set of size r. And then this, res this result was proved by Bolobash and then later by Fouridi, who saw the connection to Bolobash set pairs method to this thing. And then after that, there was a result by Noga alone, who showed that if you have an r partite setting, then 2r choose r becomes 2 to the r. Right? And so what we know, we know that if any 2 to the r vertices have common neighbor, then this hypergraph has cover number r. So in this setting, we will have that TCR of G is at most R. But one additional remark which I want to make, they not just wanted to show that this is at most R. They wanted to show that all trees are of different color. But what is important is that the result of alone says that if you have such a hypergraph, not only its cover number is R, you can cover all the edges by a transversal. And if you look on our reduction, what does it mean a transversal cover? It precisely means not only that you cover by some monochromatic trees, you cover by trees of different color. So which precisely these just two observations give you, for example, this conjecture and uh, several other things. And let me stop here. <laughs>